Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. Normally on Saturdays I'd be doing another Steam Deck emulation tutorial for you, but we're taking a hard pivot this Saturday because I'm going to talk about emulation legality in general, why you should be doing it, and why you're well within your legal rights in the United States to do so. Because last Saturday I published a guide on the PlayStation Portable and Steam Deck, and for four hours it was removed under the guise that it was not permissible content. That in fact is not the case, and luckily within four hours I was able to get it reinstated on YouTube. But here's the thing. I had a definite advantage because I have a comprehensive background in intellectual property and copyright law. I have taught it at the college level and I have used it in my own business. I dealt a lot in athlete contract negotiations in the sports and entertainment industries and I have sat through many a legal meeting. Now I will say I'm not a lawyer but I've studied it comprehensively and this is in fact the truth. But if you want to look it up I will leave all the applicable case law in the link down below. But last Saturday, I received a notification that my video was removed because it was not okay based on guidelines. And that, in fact, is not true. What I teach you is 100% allowable, and luckily, this video was taken down at 9.11 a.m., and it was reinstituted around 1.30 in the afternoon. I won my appeal within four hours, and the video was placed back for you all to enjoy and to learn something from. But trust me, this is because I knew what to say, and I knew what to reference to make sure I was protected. I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to teach you guys moving forward how to take care of this yourself, because like I said, about four hours later, it was up. And I'm also going to say to you that if you ever run into an issue with this and you have any questions, just contact me. If I have the time, I'm willing to help. But this allows me to teach you guys how to use emulation and how to do so effectively and legally, and that is the most important thing. But to talk about this, we have to do a little bit of a history lesson. I promise it'll be entertaining, so just stick with me here. Obviously, on screen, we have the PlayStation 1, one of the first 3D consoles in the home, and it basically brought 3D to the masses. Excellent hardware. I absolutely love it. But Sony Computer Entertainment of America got into a little bit of a court battle with Connectix, also known as Bleem. You probably saw this if you were alive in the late 90s or early 2000s, but it was one of the first PlayStation 1 emulators, and what Connectix did was reverse engineer the BIOS for the PlayStation PlayStation 1 to allow software to run on non-target hardware. Originally, Connectix lost their court case and they appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court, which found that even though they had copied the BIOS from their machine and examined it because they did not use any proprietary Sony information, this was a legal or fair use of the software and hardware. What this law means and what this precedent sets is that emulation is legal under certain criteria, which I will get into later. But this is what makes emulation legal. This is the case that is always referenced when we talk about something. And basically why we talk about it under this guise, and this comes into entertainment law a lot, is the concept of fair use. Fair use allows for certain use of copywritten materials in different transformative or otherwise ways. And transformative is a big hinge on this because if you were to reverse engineer hardware, you are transforming it. And so long as you don't have information on how it was done, then you can do something like this. Own a PlayStation 1, have a copy of Crash Bandicoot 3, and play it on your Steam Deck. Just be aware though, for this to be legal, you have to own the original hardware, you have to own the original software, and you need to marry them together yourself. If you don't have the console, if you don't have the game, then technically this is not permissible. And it's not just for the Steam Deck. Any bit of hardware, something like the Mister, that can run PlayStation 1 titles and has been reverse engineered in a clean room environment, and I'll get to that shortly, is totally allowed. The only other rule with US law is that you need to make the backups yourself. If I put that Crash Bandicoot 3 disc in this CD-ROM and dump it, I am good to go. And you will see here, and this is a government website, is whether or not you can backup your computer software. Everyone uses backup, the legal term is archive, but so long as you own the software, it is legal for you to make a backup of that software and you can run it on any hardware that allows for it. Just remember, the archival of your own software is 100% legal under the eyes of US law. And this video is for US jurisdictions. I do not know the law in any other countries outside of music and licensing. That is something I do know for the worldwide. But if you sell the game, you gotta destroy the file. But so long as you do these things, you own the game, you create the file, and you own the hardware to run it on, whatever that hardware may be, you are 100% in the free and clear to do whatever you want, however you want. 
and that allows me to teach you how to use emulation on any device. But I do have some asterisks on that statement. There's things that I can teach you, and there are things that I cannot teach you. Basically, it comes down to this, and if you make tutorials, you need to be aware of this. I can tell you what files you need. I can tell you where to put those files. I can tell you how to move those files around so that the emulator will ingest them correctly and you will be able to enjoy your game. I am able to tell you how to get all of the screenshots into something like the Steam Deck. This is all allowable. I am allowed to do all of this, but I cannot do one thing. I cannot point you to where the files live. I cannot provide you those files. You were on your own there. That is the legal delineating factor in teaching emulation tutorials. I can show you everything you need to do. I just can't give you any of it, nor am I ever going to link to it or show it on screen. That allows me to do stuff like Final Burn Neo tutorials. I can show you exactly how it's done, and if you own the arcade board and you dump your ROMs, you can do it too. And believe it or not, I do actually in the background own all of the games that I show on these emulation videos. I have an extremely comprehensive collection, but I can even teach you things like how to improve the games based on their emulation. This is all legal. And for some reason or another, money, 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 companies don't want you to do it. They'd rather you buy a new version from them. Now be very aware when I talk about these BIOS files, you technically have to dump them from your own hardware. It's not hard. Maybe you should do it. You might learn something. But the reality is this is all permissible. If I show a Sega Saturn game running on Mr. and I own it on a Sega Saturn and I own a Sega Saturn, there's nothing wrong with this. The thing about emulation is the following though. People can reverse engineer the hardware however they want. They just need to do it without any prior knowledge of how it works that would be considered copywritten or intellectual property material. If I have a book that I stole from Sony that had all of the code in it, this was pretend that Philip K. Dick book is that, and I made an emulator, that is not allowed. You have to do this without prior knowledge of how the hardware works if that prior knowledge documentation info or otherwise would be considered a trade secret. It's as simple as that. And if you do want to spend some time, read Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated versus Connectrix Corp, because like I said, this is what all of the law hinges on. So let's recap. I can teach you how to do this all day long. That is perfectly fine. I cannot give you anything to allow you to do it, BIOS files, games, or otherwise. I can't even point you in the direction on where to find them. That is on you. But if you own the hardware, you own the game, and you make your backup, you are 100% allowed to do this. And even with all of that behind us, supporting us, things can still get caught in the safety net. Now, YouTube was very responsive, and within four hours, I was able to have this reversed. But that's because I knew what to say. I knew how to defend myself, and I knew what I had not done, which is any of the things that are not allowed, such as pointing you to BIOS files or providing you with links to how to find things. That is allowed, and just trust me, you don't want these strikes. One, and you can't upload. Three, and you lose your channel. I put four and a half years into this channel, and I have no plans on stopping, but legal minefields like this exist, and you can end up stepping on a mine even though you shouldn't have had to in the first place. Someone like Mr. Sujano here, who mentioned this in one of his videos also teaches you how to emulate people do entire channels for this because it is allowed but pretty much every month some channel gets caught up in a issue like this this month it was just my turn and here's the thing you need to follow along with the law it is legal today but if we've learned anything in the last couple of years long-standing legal precedent and doctrine can and will be reversed i anticipate a court case in the next three to five years from a major hardware manufacturer that tries to make emulation not legal and that is very possible people are having legal videos taken down all the time because the reality is even if you might be right you don't always have the money to force the fact that you are right but if you want to make emulation videos, do it this way and you are 100% protected. If you ever run into a problem, send me a message, join my Discord, and I will talk to you and guide you through what to say so you can also get your video reinstated. I never do anything I'm not supposed to do, but when I'm in the right, damn it, I'm going to fight to make sure I get to keep doing it and you should too. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's not my usual content, but it's highly important. Like I said, if you have any questions or issues, you know where to find me. I want people to enjoy games, gaming history, and play them however they want, so long as they're doing it properly. And that's why I made this video. I'll be back next Saturday with normal content. Bye-bye.